founded in 1855. Incredible legacy. And when you think about it over the years, how do you serve the community and what has changed at Dollar Bank over, over this time? We're very proud of our history. Um, a lot has changed, obviously, in 167 years. But, you know, our, our history is, is still with us. It's, it's still part of our, of our culture, still part of our values. Uh, the bank was founded on the notion that uh, there needed to be a bank for, for everyone. In, in 1855, banking was actually for the affluent. Uh, it costs, uh, on average, of $20 or more to open a bank account. Now, the average laborer, around here anyway, in 1855, was making seven or eight cents an hour. Uh, so they couldn't afford to even open an account. And that's how we got our name, quite frankly. Uh, it, we, uh, we allowed depositors to come in and, and open a savings account for as little as $1. And uh, the part that we are most proud of is when I say it was a bank for, for everyone, uh, it truly was. It was for everyone, regardless of race, creed, or gender. It was a bank built on customer service, and, and we still hold true to those values today. You joined the bank in 95, yep. and uh, you took the reins in 15, and you have a vision for what you're going to do in the future, which carries a lot of the legacy. Can you talk about your thoughts about serving the community in the future? We are the largest mutual bank in the country right now. And at $11.5 billion, I guess we're considered a regional. But I, I always want to think of us as a community bank. And giving back to, to the communities is something that you have to do because as a financial institution, we're only as strong as the communities that we serve. Uh, we have an employee volunteer program that I'm very, very proud of. Um, our employees are fantastic get, get, getting out into the community. Every week we, we promote within the markets that we serve um, volunteer opportunities for, for, for them to sign up for. And they do, and they do so in droves. The economy, you know, <laughs> how uh, here we are today. Uh, and things have changed quite a bit over the past couple of years. What are you seeing currently, and how do you feel about it going forward? And here we are right now um, in May of 2022, and my outlook is one of trepidation. Um, uh, we have inflation, uh, the highest it's been since the early 80s. Um, we have... Uh, energy issue. We've gone from being energy independent to now energy dependent. The price of gas is, is through the roof. We still have supply chain issues. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of things that, that cause me uh, to worry a bit about the economy, but I think uh, there's a lot of positives. Uh, also, I think the last growth uh, jobs uh, growth report was very positive. I think unemployment has uh, been reduced to very, very low numbers. And, and so people are working. The, the economy is opening back up. So my hope is, is that we can get inflation under control. Um, the, mar the market uh, has been uh, unstable, and it's probably, probably an understatement. But uh, I also think that those fears in the market are unfounded. Rates right now, Prime's at 4%. It's not at 10 or 12%. We, we just came from a rate environment where it was doggone near zero. So 4% is actually not that bad. I can agree with that 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, you were always on a digital journey over, the, over your uh, tenure here, moving it forward. How do you see that evolving in the future? And how important is digital to the business model? I'm fond of using the, the phrase, uh, the future is now. And what I mean by that is uh, at the beginning of 2020, right before the pandemic, uh, a lot of people still wanted to have that in-face, person-to-person uh, -person type of service. And what the pandemic really did, uh, amongst other things, is that uh, it got people out of, out of necessity 
to be very comfortable using electronic avenues to, to, to deal with their bank. We are heavily committed to investing and continue to invest in technology. It, it, is, it is, to me, critical for our future success. Uh, it's a difference maker. Uh, so we have to be best of breed and we have to make sure that that customer experience is where it needs to be and our systems need to be intuitive. Um, our branches are, are, are changing and have been over, over the last number of years. Uh, even prior to the pandemic, we are looking to create branches with a much smaller footprint in terms of square footage. Uh, the average branch that we've built in the last seven, eight years has been probably 1,300 to 2,000 square feet and we are using self-service type of technology within those branches. Uh, we have invested heavily in the personal teller machines, the video teller machines, um, and customers are, are actually kind of enjoying it. We're also looking to train our branch personnel to be um, more uh, intelligent about technology. Uh, we call them the blue crew. So that if you have a problem with your mobile banking or you're not sure how to set up bill payment, you can go in and visit one of our folks in the branch and they'll walk you through step by step exactly how to do it and making sure that we're being responsive to our customers' needs because, you know, again, the future is now. Yeah. We talk about a smarter future. Your view on a smarter future? We've got to be more efficient and, and smarter about how we do things. If I'm gonna invest in new technology, does it eliminate existing procedures? Or does it reduce a process? We believe in being better every day. Uh, we're proud to be your partner and we're honored that you give us the opportunity. What can we do better? Customers right now in, in many ways are easier. They're willing to deal with their fi the financial institution through digital means which you know, makes it a little bit simpler, but uh, they're also much, much more demanding right now. They want things to work and they want it to work right now. They don't want to wait. And they want the, the, that you know, when they sign on and they want to transfer money to a friend or pay a bill, they want that to be immediate. So clients are much more demanding right now and, and they, they do expect that when they sign on to online banking or pull out their mobile app to, that it works. So I just ask that Fiserv just remain committed to, to our service and, and being responsive the way you have been and continuing to uh, champion the, the uh, client cause. It's our pleasure to do it. Thanks for the opportunity.